Welcome to the third part of my Photon uh, tutorial. And this time we will just close up the tutorial. I will show you the basic things of Photon you are not knowing right now and then you're good to go. A few things up front, I have added a second button uh, right next to the jump button um, and a crosshair. This button does nothing and the crosshair is just for orientation. We will use it right now. And I have already added some Ragdoll mechanics to my character. Um, I put your link down to the, in the description because I already made a video on how to add a Ragdoll mechanic to a character. And basically what I did is it just follow the steps one by one and then I was able to get this Ragdoll. So let's continue. So when I click this button, uh, the crosshair should cast away and if there is a player, the player should activate the ragdoll and just fall over. And we will use a remote procedure calls for this. Okay, here we are in the controller and these are the lines I have already added. So if the shoot button is pressed, the shoot button shouldn't be pressed anymore. So the player should press again to shoot again. And I will add this code. So. Uh, as always, we take this middle of the screen and cast away. And then we cast this way. And if we hit anything, we get out this hit info. This hit, this hit info contains a collider. And if the collider has a component called player, we actually hit a player. So uh, we can check if this component is really there. Uh, if we check if the player is not equal to null. And then we call on player or on player on hit. So let's go to the player and add this method on hit with a direction. And now let's come to the remote procedure call. So if for example, this is player one and player one pushes a button and actually hits player two. Um, and maybe let's say I activate the vector now. The Vector is only activated for player one, so for client one, and he can see that the Vector is activated. But the Vector has to be activated on all clients. So we can use the Photon view because our class inherits from mono behavior pun and then say RPC. This RPC stands for remote procedure call and will just call this method. This method is only a string, but you should have a method named like this one. Okay, I just added this method here. Make sure to have this attribute pun RPC above it, and then you're good to go. So you can add as many um, parameters as you want. The parameters have, have to be serializable. For example, uh, direction, x position, and so on. And the last parameter should be photon message info. So, and here we call this remote procedure. Uh, we have to specify the name, the target, and then all the um, parameters. For example, here I have two parameters, so I uh, would have to add one parameter more. So this would be fine, but I only want one parameter, so I add one parameter. Let's take a short look at the target. We can say all, this means everyone will call this, so every client will call it and the caller will call it directly. If you choose the buffered options, the server will actually save the remote procedure call and if a new client comes in, all the buffered remote procedure calls will be called one by one. Um, you can call the remote procedure calls via server. This means the caller doesn't execute it directly. So the client actually waits for the server to confirm the remote procedure call. Or you can say something like others. That means everyone will execute this on hit RPC except the current client. On hit RPC, we say, okay, set vector to, so we actually activate this vector. And if there's a controller on it, we will destroy the controller. So there will, won't be a, a controller for all clients except for the owner. You could also ask if I am the owner, then destroy the controller. So the client can't control his own player anymore because he's dead. So this is how you call remote procedure calls. And there is a third one called properties. 
So it's possible to set some properties with a network. So for example, if you if we are the owner of the game object, we will set a property to our local player, say custom properties at the state dead. And this can access by any player in the network by photo network dot player list others. Then the ID of the player or the index of the player and say custom properties state. So other players could always check if there are some changes or you have any random class in your project, for example, like the game manager that has a mono behavior pun callbacks. And then you just add a method and override the on player properties update. There are also properties on the womb and there's a method called on womb properties update. And then you will receive the target player and the change properties. I will just loop over these properties and say, okay, property key of player target ID user ID has changed to change value. So in the um, console, I will just see what properties were changed. So, and here we are in the game. So if I click now on this crosshair, the crosshair will cast away to the player detected that this is a collider with a component player. Call locally in this window only on hit and says, okay, on hit RPC should be executed and it will be executed on this window and on this window and on both windows, uh, the vector will be activated. Okay, we just aim and click. And there we go. So I showed you three different methods to send data over the network and Photon has a page uh, about synchronization and here they just showed you how these three methods could be used. So we started with frequent updates. We used it for the input of the player, the position and rotation of the player. This was in the second part of this network tutorial series. And in this part, we just um, talked about remote procedure calls and these are often used for actions of players. And where updates and states can be just um, handled by the custom properties. So if you want to send something over the network, uh, just consider these three types of network traffic. So that's it for today. In the next episode, we will talk about lag compensation because um, the players look very laggy on uh, each other side. And we will have a look at some techniques to make every animation and every state very fluent. So stay tuned and subscribe to my channel and check the playlist of the whole uh, GTA Mobile online tutorial series because it will help you a lot uh, if you are new to Unity and want to learn everything.